So I want to begin my journey about 40 years ago, but we're not going to cover it in exact detail. But I started out in an organization as a part-time teller. And one of the first pieces of technology that I became acquainted with, in addition to the machine that I was using, it was really just a, a, an adding machine because we just used adding machines to make sure that the information was correct and we hand wrote information down, pass it along to a proof department, and the next thing you know, we were done with it. But the, but the organization got this great idea that they were going to put in an ATM. And not only were they putting in the ATMs, because we kind of knew about them because they were in the wall of the organization. They were kind of outside. People in inclement weather had to stand there and put their card in. So we weren't too concerned about it. Then they warmed them up and brought them inside. It was like, oh my gosh, they put them not only inside, but they put them right beside us. And so it was our mindset was like, wow, this technology is going to take my freaking job. That's what we thought. Because as an employee, we were not properly prepared in our mindset for what the change of technology was going to bring for us. We did not have a conversation about connectivity. We didn't have a conversation about productivity. Nor did we have a conversation about the education. But what I can tell you, fast forwarding 40 years, is with the implementation of technology, I have yet to see a person really lose a job. Now what happens is they change the job that the technology might be supporting or helping, but we always as humans, we find another way to be, to be meaningful, to have purpose, to find something else to do. So we should never fear that technology will take away the human what we should do is embrace the technology for helping us. And as part of that, we need to think about um, another aspect of the, of the ATM. It's 40 years later at our home. I am also known as an ATM. I think that's pretty, pretty co cool, the whole circle. And that's because I dole out cash, but I'm referred to as the automated Troy machine. <laughs> so it works in that regard. In organizations today, if you are going to think about technology, you know that there are five generations that are currently working in the workplace. It's unprecedented that we actually have that many individuals, uh, uh, that, gen that many generational groups actually employed at the same time. What we do know is that from that mixture, there are four very specific characteristics that individuals are displaying. Now, this crosses all generations. And I want to make this really clear because there's an opportunity for folks to sometimes go, that millennial generation, and as we would say in South Carolina, bless your heart. <laughs> but the millennial generation, although it makes up a large population of individuals, it's very important that we don't just classify people based on when they were born. We would be better and smarter when we use technology to use segmentation to allow us to determine what are the behaviors of the individuals who are engaged in this product or service or organization. Those characteristics that we see today in the marketplace is entrepreneurialism. There are more small businesses being started than ever before. In addition to that entrepreneurial spirit of, oh, I'm going to open my own company, and by the way, for people who think that owning your own company is a, is a great thing, talk to somebody who owns their own company because they get no vacations, they don't have any opportunity to do anything fun except build themselves back into their organization again. But the entrepreneurial spirit is alive within the individuals who are working. That entrepreneurial spirit many times is because they will say, what would I do if I were in charge? Although they may say it more like, well, I'd do this if I were in charge. So they have that mindset of where they want to participate. And that leads us to the second characteristic, which is that they want to collaborate. Collaboration is different than cooperation. Cooperation is when you kind of agree to say, yeah, that's okay, yeah, I, I can share some information with you. Oh yeah, that's fine, I'll, I'll cooperate, I'll, I'll be a participant. But to truly collaborate, Every individual sitting at the table has to agree they need each other. 
When they do that, then they have an opportunity to move themselves into an area of collaboration. And it's all about how the mind is impacting the decisions, the influence. As leaders, we are called to motivate, influence, and enable others to accomplish things that they may not have thought they could do on their own. And culturally in the United States, we have an advantage over other countries. When I was teaching a course at De La Salle University in Manila this past summer, I asked the students, how many of you think you're a leader? Very few hands were raised. I asked that same question at the College of Charleston, and almost every student raised their hand. It's because of the mindset. And in the Asian community, the concept is that they have to accomplish something. They have to complete a certification. They have to somehow be deemed a leader. In the United States, we think more about the individual leader. That entrepreneurial spirit is part of that. That collaboration where we want to be involved, all of that is impacting the mindset of the leader that will make a difference whether technology is put into the organization or not. And it is very important because in this marketplace today, individuals want to be socially connected. They want to talk to each other. It's a misnomer if you think that people who are on their phones don't like to talk to people. They generally are talking to folks unless they're playing a game. But that's okay if they do because everybody needs rest and relaxation in their day. But mostly individuals who are on their phone are connecting themselves and they need to do it in social media. So one of the issues that we have in technology is as we talk about the connectivity, we talk about the productivity and the education is how do we make technology relevant for social media, especially when many of us are in financial services and we are hammered down because the data cannot escape the organization. Now, if you're in retail, you can just give away the data anytime you want, and nobody cares, right? But in the financial services industry, oh no, we have to lock down everything. Everything has to be tight. And we are missing an opportunity to socially connect and to allow our organization to be involved socially. Do you know what the whole purpose of the social platforms of Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, Instagram, it's to carry on the conversation. Those conversations that you might typically have had one-on-one -on -one or in the presence of physical, you now can have in a virtual world. Can you imagine leading today without the opportunity to have a virtual connection? Let me tell you, this is not your grandpa's global anymore. I have had the privilege this past year to visit 10 different countries and to talk with leaders in those organizations about what they're facing in the realm of technology, employment retention, what is happening, but the adoption of technology, everyone is interested in that. Technology is cool, it's fun, it's great, and allows us to be socially connected. It gives us new platforms in which we can collaborate. It gives us an opportunity to be entrepreneurial. And the last thing that happens, and I'm not really sure that, the so that, that you'll be able to solve this from technology, but the last characteristic is having a social purpose. Employees want to be engaged with organizations that do something. So is it possible that the technology solution that you have in your organization that could meet that particular need might be a way that you support a social activity? You might support a social cause. We know across the world there are many global issues. Hunger, housing, gender egalitarianism, conflict, agriculture, transportation. Every country in the world has those as their issues, their global issues that need to be solved. So could technology somehow be engaged and involved in that? So when you're thinking about the mindset and you're giving yourself an opportunity to, to consider what you want to do with technology, you as the leaders will make a difference. You motivate, influence, and enable the decisions that are going to happen in the organization. It starts from the top down.
the three reasons that any culture can exist in a very good way is number one, that the culture itself is built upon the truth. That what you say in the organization, you actually do. That senior management supports it. The senior most individuals within an organization must support it or it dies on the vine. It becomes a revolution. It becomes a mutiny on the bounty. It becomes some Norma Ray, raise your hand in your manufacturing plant. We must consider that to make this culture work, we have to live it, breathe it, and own it. And it will happen when we make those decisions from the top. So we're making decisions from the top down for technology, from the bottom up, and side to side because we need to make sure that we are in a position to provide the solutions that are needed. 63% of employees within your organization are looking for a promotion or a new position. If you do not provide an opportunity to develop the individuals within your organization, you're going to lose them at a cost of one third of their annual salary. But here's the good news. Harvard did a research determined that of the individuals who responded, 87% of them said that if I feel valued, if I feel I'm connected to the purpose, if I have access to tools that make my job work, I'm going to be engaged and I have a greater chance of staying in that organization because I'm going to, meet, get, I'm going to receive all the things that I need. That is important for us to consider. So, I leave you with this thought about technology and how it impacts employee retention. Remember that the next big idea is going to be measured by its outcomes and not necessarily about how creative it is. Because technology is an opportunity for innovation. Innovation is nothing more than a process that solves a need. When we create through innovation, we create through technology to find a solution, we have been innovative and we can claim ourselves as innovators. Anytime we create something and it doesn't solve a need, it's called art. Thank you.